Hello guys, welcome back to my class. Guys, listen carefully so that you will learn something and so that you will know the importance and significance of our lesson. Alright? Before we move on to our new lesson, let us have a short review regarding to our lesson last time. Our lesson last time was all about waste segregation. Alright? Guys, in an effort to minimize the accumulation of waste products in landfills, the government, in cooperation with the local government units, encourage local residents to segregate waste so that those waste materials that can no longer be reused and recycled will go to the landfill. Waste segregation is also necessary, guys, in determining what kind of waste materials are toxic and need to be disposed of in a safe system and what particular waste products are safe for the environment. Guys, sa pagsisikap na babawasan ang akumulasyon ng mga basura, sa mga tambakan ng mga basura, hinihikayat ang pamahalaan, katuwang ang mga local government units, na dapat ang mga lokal na residente ay kailangan nilang paghiwahiwalayin ang mga basura, upang ang mga basurang hindi na magagamit muli ay siya lamang mapupunta sa landfill. Ang landfill guys, it is an area where waste is buried under the ground, okay? Kinakailangan din paghiwahiwalayin ang mga basura upang matukoy kung anong uri ng mga basura o materyales ang nakakalason at kailang itapon sa isang ligtas na sistema o pamamaraan. At kung anong partikular na mga produktong basura ang ligtas para sa kapaligiran at sa kalikasan. Alright? Waste segregation guys is the process of dividing waste materials to determine which items can be reused, recycled, and need to be thrown away. Now, waste can be segregated as dry or wet, biodegradable, and non-biodegradable. Now, when we say dry waste, it includes paper, wood, and other related products, glass, and metals. Next, wet waste. Wet waste, guys, are organic waste generated by food establishments and leftover food from households. Next, Biodegradables are those which can be sent back to the earth in the form of composting. Alright? Next, non-biodegradables are those which cannot be composted. Ayan. We have suggested waste on proper waste segregation. The first one, prepare a sorter bin or container before starting with the segregation. Number two, group together the sorted items based on their category. Alright? Next, put leftover food in a covered container. This can be composted and converted as pig feed. Okay? Next, infectious waste such as soil diapers, sanitary napkins, and other contaminants must be placed in a covered container. Okay? Next, be consistent. Constant practice develops into a habit. Next, waste disposal. You know what guys? Waste disposal has been one of the major problems in the key cities and congested settlements. Proper waste disposal must be strictly observed and consistently practiced so that pollution and flooding can be minimized. Alright? Okay, next. We also have several ways of disposing our garbage. The first one, landfill. Waste disposal in landfill involves burying the waste in abandoned or unused quarries, mining voids, or pits. Next, incineration. When we say incineration, guys, it is a disposal method in which solid organic waste are subjected to combustion to convert them into residue and gaseous products. Alright? Now, our new lesson is all about basic cookery. Now, what do you mean by cookery, guys? Cookery is defined as a chemical process, the mixing of ingredients, the application and withdrawal of heat, decision-making, technical knowledge, and manipulative skills. Cookery, guys, is considered to be both an art and technology. Food preparation is a modern term in professional cookery, it denotes preparation and cooking. Cookery, guys, or cooking is the art 
science, and craft of using heat to prepare food for consumption. Sa madaling salita, ang cookery ay isang proseso, sining, at agham na kung saan gumagamit tayo ng init upang makapagluto o makapaghanda ng pagkain. In this lesson, we will study the kitchen utensils that are often used to prepare food. Alright? But before that, let us first know the objectives that we need to know and learn in this lesson. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to do the following. First one, identify basic kitchen tools and equipment. Discuss cooking terms and procedure. Demonstrate basic cooking methods. Explain safety precautions in food preparation. Now, why do we need to identify the basic kitchen tools and equipment? Guys, we need to identify the basic kitchen appliances and utensils that we will use to find out what it is used for and so that we may know the importance of them and expedite our work in preparing the foods we will cook. Guys, kailangan natin tukuyin ang mga pangunahing kasangkapan at kagamitan sa kusina na ating gagamitin upang malaman kung para saan ba ito o kung ano ang gamit nito. Upang nang sa ganon, malaman natin ang kahalagahan ng mga ito at mapabilis ang ating trabaho sa paghahanda ng mga pagkain na ating iluluto. Okay? Next, discuss cooking terms and procedure. Guys, another of the objectives that we need to do is discuss the terms and procedure of cooking so that we learn every step and technique of cooking and for us to learn the proper cooking of the foods we prepare. Alam nyo guys, kailangan natin talakay ng mga tuntunin at pamamaraan ng pagluluto upang nang sa ganon, matutunan natin ang bawat hakbang at pamamaraan sa pagluluto at para matutunan natin ang tamang pagluluto sa mga pagkain na ating ihahanda. Okay? Next! Demonstrate basic cooking methods. Guys, we need to show or demonstrate every step in cooking so that we can see and know if we are doing it right. Alright? And for others to also see and learn the correct cooking steps. Okay? Guys, ang ibig kong sabihin, kailangan natin ipakita o i-demonstrate ang bawat hakbang sa pagluluto upang makita natin at malaman natin kung tama ba ang ating ginagawa at upang makita at matutunan din ng iba ang tamang hakbang sa pagluluto. Alright? And last one, explain safety precautions in food preparation. We need to explain the safety precautions when it comes to food preparation. Why? Because there are things or situations that can cause us harm or danger when we are cooking and preparing foods. That is why it's very important that we study it and avoid it so that it does not cause us harm. Alright? Guys, kailangan natin ipaliwanag ang mga pag-iingat sa kaligtasan pagdating sa paghahanda ng mga pagkain. Bakit? Dahil may mga bagay o pangyayari na maaari magdulot na hindi maganda o ng panganib sa atin kapag tayo ay nagluluto o naghahanda ng mga pagkain. Kaya naman, napakahalaga na pag-aralan natin ito at iwasan upang hindi ito magdulot ng hindi maganda sa atin. Okay? Now, basic kitchen tools and equipment. Like any craft guys, cooking requires patience, practice, and usage of proper tools and equipment. Guys, there are hundreds of different kitchen gadgets available. Upang tayo ay makapagluto at makapaghanda ng mga pagkain guys, kailangan natin ng sapat na pasensya, kasanayan, at pagkakaroon ng kaalaman sa tamang paggamit ng mga kasangkapan sa kusina. Okay? Now, here are the most important tools, utensils, and equipment needed. The first one, frying pan. Fry pan or skillet. A long-handled shallow pan used for frying. Guys, a frying pan, fry pan, or skillet is a flat metal pan, wide, Shallow pans with a long handle and sloping sides, and no lid. And it is available in different sizes. Frying pan, guys, is used for stirring, frying, frying foods together, quick cooking, crisp frying, searing, and browning foods. It is typically 20 to 30 centimeters in diameter with relatively low sides that flare outsides. Guys, when we say frying pan, 
Ito yung tinatawag nating kawali. Itong kawali na ito ay gawa sa metal. Malapad, mababaw, may mahabang hawakan, palihis ang gilid, at kadalasang walang takip. Ngayon, saan ginagamit ang frying pan guys? Ginagamit ang frying pan o ang kawali sa paghalo o paggisa. Katulad ng sibuyas, bawang, kamatis, at marami pang iba. Ginagamit din ito sa pagpiprito ng mga pagkain. Katulad ng itlog, hotdog, karne, isda, at marami pang iba. Okay? That is the use of frying pan, guys. Next, saucepan. Saucepan is a deep cooking pan, typically round, made of metal, and with one long handle and a lid. Guys, a saucepan is a piece of cookware that functions as a small, deep pot for cooking liquids on a stove top. This type of pan is deeper than a standard saute pan or frying pan, but shallower than a stock pot. A saucepan has a flat bottom and steep sides with straight edges like a pot and a long handle like a pan. They usually come with a stainless steel or glass lid to trap heat inside. It's also used for stewing or boiling. Guys, ang saucepan, ito yung tinatawag nating kasirola. Guys, ang ganitong uri ng kasangkapang panluto ay mas malalim kaysa sa karaniwang saute pan or kawali. Ngunit mas mababaw kaysa sa stock pot. Alright? Kung mapapansin ninyo, ang kasirola ay mayroong patag na ilalim na hindi katulad sa ibang kasangkapan ay pahilis. At mayroon itong mahabang hawakan tulad ng isang kawali. At kung mapapansin ninyo, mayroon ding kasirola na kung saan dalawa ang hawakan. Ngunit hindi mahaba ang hawakan nito. Okay? Kadalasan sa mga sospan ay mayroong takip upang makulong ang init sa loob. Kadalasan din itong ginagamit sa paglalaga at pagpapakulo ng mga pagkain. Now, what is the most common use of a saucepan? Guys, saucepans are mostly used for what they are named for, sauce. You can also prepare small quantities of different soups, stews, gravies, and foods like custard or mashed potatoes. The relative shallowness of a saucepan also makes it perfect for thickening sauces or dishes like rice dish. Guys, hinango ang pangalan ng saucepan dahil sa kung ano ang gamit nito. Ang saucepan guys ay kadalasang din ginagamit sa pagluluto ng mga sauce o sarsa. Sopas, nilaga, gravies, dish o ulam at marami pang iba. Okay? Next. So take pan. A wide pan with straight or slightly curved sides that are generally a little higher than those of a frying pan. Guys, a saute pan is a shallow pan with straight side walls. This is the main difference between a saute pan and a frying pan, which has a slanted sides. The straight sides make the saute pan better suited for certain tasks that require cooking ingredients in a liquid, such as shallow frying or braising, because these liquids could leak over a frying pan's slanted sides. Guys, Ang saute pan ay isang uri ng kawali na kung saan mababaw din siya na medyo mataas kaysa sa frying pan at tuwid ang gilid nito. Hindi katulad sa ibang kawali o frying pan na pahilis ang gilid. At kung mapapansin ninyo, ang saute pan ay kadalasang mayroong takip. And as you can see guys, it has a long handle on one side and usually have a loop handle on the other side so the pan can be easily lifted. You know what guys? So the pans are most often made of stainless steel, enameled cast iron, aluminum, and copper. Now, what is the use of a saute pan, guys? A saute pan can also be used to saute, stir fry, or sear in the same way that a skillet can. However, despite its name, a saute pan is not necessarily the best pan to use to saute ingredients. And some chefs actually prefer using a skillet for sauteing because of its slanted sides. Ang saute pan guys ay maaari ding gamitin upang maggisa, magprito, at magluto ng iba pang mga pagkain. Gayun pa man guys, base sa pag-aaral at karanasan, mas maganda pa rin gamitin ang frying pan sa paggisa kaysa sa saute pan. Okay, that is the main use of saute pan guys. Next, wok. A wok is a pan with rounded bottom and sloping sides, ideally suited for stir frying. You know what guys, a wok is a deep round bottom cooking pan that originated in China. It is common in China and similar pans are found in parts of East, South, 
and Southeast Asia, as well as being popular in other parts of the world. Kung mapapansin ninyo guys, ang wok ay mayroong malalim at pabilog ang ibaba. Based on studies guys, nagmula ito sa China. Ang mga iba't ibang uri ng wok ay maaaring makita sa iba't ibang bahagi ng mundo na kung saan makikita na rin sa ating lugar. Now, what is the main purpose of wok guys? A wok's main purpose is to stir fry guys. And it excels at that because it can handle the heat of a professional stove. The high heat and naturally non-stick surface means that you need to use less oil in a wok, therefore making it a healthier option. Ang pangunahing layunin o gamit ng wok guys ay ang magprito. Maganda itong gamitin guys sapagkat kaya nito kahit gaano pa kainit o kalakas ang apoy. Maari din itong gamitin sa paggisa, pagluto ng mga gulay, karne, isda at marami pang iba. Okay? Next, stock pot. It is traditionally used to make cooking or broth, which can be the basis for cooking more complex recipes. A stock pot, guys, is a generic name for one of the most common types of cooking pot used worldwide. Ibig sabihin, guys, ang stock pot ay isang kasangkapan na kariniwang ginagamit, lalo na kapag may mga okasyon na ginaganap. As you can see, guys, it is a tall, wide pot with a flat bottom. Straight sides, a wide opening to the full diameter of the pot, two handles on the sides, and a lid with a handle on top. Katulad ng nakikita nyo guys, ang stock pot ay isang malaki, maluwang, mayroong patag na ilalim, tuwid ang mga gilid nito, mayroong dalawang hawakan sa gilid at may takip na mayroong hawakan sa itaas. Alright? Now, what is the use of stock pot guys? The stock pot guys has a narrow sides ensure that liquid contents evaporate more slowly than in a pot where the liquid has more exposure to the air. So the stock pot is best for use particularly brothy, long simmering mixtures like stocks and soups and also for boiling things like pasta or potatoes and for steaming. Guys, kadalasan ginagamit ang stock pot sa pagpapakulo ng mga pagkain. Pagluluto o pagpapakulo ng sabaw, pagluluto ng mga sopas, lugaw, pagluluto ng maraming potahe, at marami pang iba. Okay? Next, colander. A colander is a bowl-shaped kitchen utensil with holes in it used for draining food such as pasta or rice. As you can see guys, a colander guys is a hemispherical kitchen utensil usually made of metal or plastic with holes in it and two handles. It is used to drain the cooking water from foods. Kung makikita ninyo guys, ang colander ay kadalasang gawa sa metal o plastic at mayroong mga butas at mayroong dalawang hawakan. Now, what is the purpose of colander guys? A colander guys is a kitchen utensil that is primarily used to rinse vegetables or strain foods such as pasta. The bottom is perforated which allows for water or liquid to drain through while holding or retaining on to the solids inside. Ang colander guys, ay isang kasangkapan sa kusina na ang pangunahing gamit ay upang salain ang mga pagkain, tulad ng pasta, mga gulay, at iba pang mga pagkain. Ang ilalim nito ay mayroong mga butas na nagbibigay daan para sa tubig na maubos at maalis habang sinasala ang pagkain. Alright, usually guys, the colander is used to drain spaghetti after it is cooked. The contents of the pot, water, and pasta are poured directly into the colander and shaken for a few seconds to get all the water out. Kung mapapansin ninyo sa larawan, ang colander ay ginagamit upang masala ang spaghetti o ang pasta at maubos ang tubig nito. Ang tubig at pasta ay direktang ibinubuhos sa colander at inaalog ito ng ilang segundo upang maalis ang lahat ng tubig nito. Okay, that is the main purpose of colander guys. Next, strainer. It is a small wire mesh bowl with a handle. It is used to drain liquid from solid food or to remove solid bits from liquid. If you guys notice, the strainer bears a resemblance to the colander. It also has similarities on how to use. Its only difference is that the strainer is made of stainless steel with mesh or wire and its holes are small compared to the colander. Ang ibig kong sabihin guys, 
ang strainer ay mayroong pagkakatulad sa colander. Mayroon din itong pagkakatulad kung paano gamitin. Ang pagkakaiba nga lang nito, ang strainer ay gawa sa stainless steel na mayroong mesh or wire. Maliliit ang mga butas nito kumpara sa colander. Now, what is the use of a strainer, guys? A strainer, guys, is a kitchen device having holes punched in it or made of cross wires that is most used to strain liquids away from ingredients but also to occasionally sift fine ingredients away from larger ingredients. The strainer may be formed as a spoon-shaped utensil or a basket-shaped strainer for various materials such as metal, nylon, or cloth. Ang strainer, guys, ay isang kagamitan sa kusina na mayroong mga butas sa loob at gawa ito sa nylon or wire. Guys, ito ay kadalasang ginagamit upang salain ang mga pinong sangkap mula sa malalaking sangkap. Ginagamit ang strainer upang paghiwalayin ang solid foods into liquid. Kung titignan ninyo, para itong hugis kutsara o hugis basket na kung saan gawa sa metal, nylon, o wire. Alright, next, cutting board. It's a tough board used to place material on to be cut. A cutting board, guys, is also known as a chopping board. It is a kitchen utensil used as a protective surface on which to cut or slice things. A cutting board, guys, is a durable board on which to place material for cutting. The kitchen cutting board is commonly used in preparing and cutting food, such as meat, fish, vegetables, and many more. Kitchen cutting boards are thin, flat piece, and are often made of wood or plastic and come in various widths and sizes. Ang cutting board, guys, ay isang kagamitan sa kusina na kung saan ginagamit ito bilang proteksyon sa ibabaw kung saan tayo naghihiwa ng mga iba't ibang pagkain. Guys, ang cutting board ay isang matibay na tabla na kung saan karaniwan natin ginagamit sa paghahanda at paghihiwa ng mga pagkain, katulad ng karne, isda, gulay, prutas, at marami pang iba. Ang cutting board, guys, kung mapapansin ninyo, isa itong manipis, patag, at kadalasang gawa sa kahoy o plastic. At mayroon itong iba't ibang lapad, laki at sukat. Alright? Now, why are cutting boards important? This longevity not only makes a wood cutting board a smart financial investment, it makes it a safe tool when preparing food, especially raw meat, you want a sturdy, reliable surface. This is important to prevent injuries, guys. A wood cutting board provides this stability. Katulad ng sinabi ko, guys, mahalaga ang paggamit ng cutting board kapag tayo ay naghihiwa ng mga pagkain upang maproteksyonan ang lamesa o ang ibabaw kung saan tayo naghihiwa at upang maiwasan ang pinsala at upang maging maayos ang paghihiwa sa mga pagkain ating iluluto. Alright? Next, ladle. Ladle is a deep spoon with a long handle usually used for serving soup and sauces. Ladle, guys, is a large, long-handled spoon with a cup-shaped bowl used for serving soup, stew, or sauce and gravies. It is a type of cooking implement used for soup and other foods. Although designs vary, a typical ladle has a long handle terminating in a deep bowl. Frequently with the bowl oriented at an angle to the handle to facilitate lifting liquid out of a pot or other vessel and conveying it to a bowl. Guys, kung makikita ninyo, ang ladle guys ay isang malaking kutsara o sandok na may mahabang hawakan at may hugis tasa na mangkok na ginagamit para sa paghahain ng sopas, lugaw, nilaga, sarsa at sabaw. Ito ay isang uri ng kagamitan guys sa pagluluto na kung saan ginagamit para sa pagkuha ng pagkain upang mapadali ang pagkuha sa mga ito. As you can see guys, ladles comes in a variety of materials. From metals like stainless steel, aluminum, and copper to natural materials like wood and bamboo to synthetics like nylon, silicon, and plastic. As I said a while back, the ladle is a kitchen tool that can be used to serve foods such as sauces, gravies, and toppings as well as skim and stir ingredients. Guys, ang ganitong uri ng sandok ay may iba't ibang materyal sa pagkakagawa. Mayroong mula sa metal, stainless, tanso, kahoy, 
plastic, at marami pang iba. Alright? That's the main purpose of ladle, guys. Next, mortar and pestle. A strong bowl used with a pestle to grind, crush, or smash spices and other foods. Guys, mortar and pestle is a set of two simple tools used from the Stone Age to the present day to prepare ingredients or substances by crushing and grinding them into a fine paste or powder in the kitchen, laboratory, and pharmacy. Guys, ang mortar and pestle ay isang set ng dalawang simpleng kagamitan na ginagamit mula sa panahon ng bato hanggang sa kasalukuyan upang maghanda ng mga sangkap sa pamamagitan ng pagdurog at paggiling sa mga ito. Guys, karaniwan itong ginagamit sa kusina, laboratorio, at parmasya. As you can see guys, mortar is a durable bowl commonly made or constructed using hard materials including ceramics, glass, stone, marble, wood, and less commonly bamboo, able to withstand repeated grinding. It's a vessel in which substances are ground or crushed with a pestle. The pestle is a rounded grinding club, often made of the same materials such as mortar. A pestle is a tool used to crush, mash, or grind materials in a mortar. Gaya ng nakikita ninyo guys, ang mortar at pestle ay isang matibay na kagamitan na kadalasan gawa sa bato, marmol, at kahoy. Ang mortar guys, ito ay isang sisidlan na kung saan ang mga sangkap ay dinidikdik o dinudurog gamit ang pestle. Ang pestle naman ay ginagamit sa pagdurog, pagmasa, o paggiling ng mga sangkap. The mortar and pestle was the first means known for grinding grain. The grain was placed in a shallow depression in a stone, the mortar, and pounded with a rod-like stone, the pestle. Mortars and pestles, guys, use either crushing, grinding, and mixing small solids or ingredients. Guys, ang pangunahing gamit ng mortar and pestle ay durugin, gilingin, at haluin ang mga sangkap sa pagluluto. Alright? As you can see, guys, mortar and pestle, guys, come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Kung mapapansin ninyo, ang mortar and pestle may iba't ibang laki, alright? At hugis, depende sa pagkakagawa. Alright, next. Measuring cup. Measuring cup it is a kitchen utensil used to measure ingredients by volume. Measuring cups have a lip or pour spout above the top line to prevent spills. Measuring cups, guys, may be made of plastic, glass, or metal. Transparent cups can be read from an external scale. And as you can see guys, a measuring cup has a markings for measuring ingredients in different forms that are used in cooking or baking. Kung mapapansin ninyo guys, ang mga measuring cup ay gawa sa plastic, babasagin o metal. At kung makikita ninyo guys, mayroon itong marka na kung saan ito ang magiging basihan mo na pang sukat sa mga sangkap kung gaano kadami o kakonti ang ilalagay mo sa measuring cup. Now, what is the use of measuring cup guys? Guys, Measuring cups are used to measure the volume of liquids such as milk, water, oil, or solid powders like sugar, flour, and many more. A measuring cups generally consists of a scale markings at varying heights, and the material being measured is added to the cup till it reaches the desired level. Guys, ang mga measuring cup ay ginagamit upang sukatin ang mga liquid substances or ingredients gaya ng gatas, tubig, mantika, o mga solid ingredients katulad ng asukal, harina, o powder, at marami pang iba. Ginagamit ang measuring cups upang masukat at malaman ang dami ng mga sangkap na ilalagay natin pagdating sa pagluluto at paggawa ng mga tinapay, mamon, cake, at marami pang iba. That is the use of measuring cups, guys. Next, measuring spoon. Measuring spoon is used to measure the amount of ingredients, either liquid or dry, when cooking. As you can see guys, measuring spoons may be made of plastic, metal, and other materials. They are available in many sizes, including the teaspoon and tablespoon. Tulad ng nakikita ninyo guys, ang mga kutsarang pansukat ay maaaring gawa sa plastic, metal, at iba pang mga materyales. At kung mapapansin ninyo, Mayroon itong iba't ibang laki at sukat. 
na kung saan nakabase ang dami o konti ng sangkap na inyong gagamitin sa laki at sukat ng measuring spoon na inyong gagamitin. Now, the main purpose of measuring spoon guys are special. Standardized spoons used to measure very small quantities, exact amounts of ingredients, either liquid or dry when cooking or baking. Measuring spoons accurately measure spices and other dry ingredients such as baking powder and even small amounts of flour. Liquid ingredients such as honey, milk, or tomato paste are also measured in measuring spoons. Guys, ang pangunahing gamit ng measuring spoons ay upang sukatin ang napakaliit na dami, eksaktong dami ng mga sangkap, liquid man o tuyo tulad ng asukal, gatas, tubig, harina, at marami pang iba pagdating sa pagluluto at pagbibake. Guys, measuring cups and measuring spoons ensure precise and consistent measurement for all recipes and are perfect for baking or cooking. These bakeware accessories guarantee the correct proportions are used, helping to deliver successful results. Guys, ang measuring cup at measuring spoon ay pareho lang ang gamit. Sinisiguro ng mga ito na tama ang sukat ng bawat sangkap pagdating sa pagluluto at pagbibig. Sa pamamagitan ng mga ito, makakasiguro tayo na tama at maayos ang magiging resulta nito ng mga sangkap na ating gagamitin. Alright, that is the main purpose of measuring spoon guys. And last one, grater. It is a kitchen utensil used to grate foods into fine strips or crumbs. A grater guys. It's a kitchen utensil that is usually made from metal, having a surface covered with a hole's edge and has a rough surface that you use for cutting food into very small pieces or to grate foods into fine pieces. As you can see guys, greeters are available in a variety of types and sizes, generally categorized as flat hand or rasp greeters, flat heavy duty greeters, all-purpose or box greeters, multi-purpose greeters, and rotary graters. Ang grater guys ay isang kagamitan sa kusina na karaniwang gawa sa metal. May maraming butas, matulis at magaspang na kadalasan gamitin upang putuli ng mga pagkain sa napakaliit na piraso. Kung mapapansin ninyo guys, mayroong iba't ibang hugis, laki at disenyo ang grater. You know what guys? The modern grater was invented by Francois Bollier. In the 1540s, originally to greet cheese. Alam nyo ba guys, ang modernong kudkuran ay naimbento ni Francois Boiler noong 1540. Siya ang nakaimbento sa kasangkabang ito. Okay, now, what is the main purpose of greeter guys? Greeter guys is an essential tool for food preparation that slices, grinds, and cuts foods into shapes such as strips or bits. So the ingredient can be evenly dispersed into the food being prepared. The sharp blades, panels, and drums used to grate the food are most often stainless steel to keep them from rusting, although plastic composite greeters are also available. Guys, ang pangunahing gamit ng greeter ay upang hiwain, hatiin, at pagpirapirasuin ang pagkain, katulad ng cheese, patatas, carrots, kalabasa, at marami pang iba gamit ang matalim na blade nito. Alright? Those are the kitchen utensils and equipment that we need to use when it comes to cooking or baking. Alright? And here ends our lesson, guys, about basic cookery. Thank you for listening, guys. Thank you for your time. Good day and God bless.